Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and today's show is presented by our good friends over at Manscaped. Always remember, if you use promo code Raiders at Manscaped.com, y'all are going to get 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. I got a really fun show for y'all on tap today. Training camp has been a wild thing for the silver and black. So what I figured I would do is I'm going to give you some of the biggest winners and some of the biggest losers thus far throughout Raiders training camp. Spoiler alert, I have some honorable mentions. I got eight winners, but I have four losers. We are first going to start with the winners because I like the good news before I give the bad news. Lester Cotton, this guy continues to get starting work as the right guard. And this was definitely one of those dudes that I had on my roster bubble. And honestly, I still have on the roster bubble. But he's been impressing the coaching staff all the way back during minicamp. All the way back during OTAs. And when you saw a lot of the different, we'll call them starting offensive line formations, Lester Cotton, because the Raiders have been doing four different fronts, He's been the main right guard. Now, sure, it's because Denzel is out, but Cotton has to be a winner. Let's go to the wide receiver room now, and I'm going to look at Matt Collins. And he started opposite of Devontae Adams on Sunday as the outside receiver with Hunter Renfro working in the slot. It is a friendly reminder that the Raiders don't have pads on quite yet, and they're not doing 11-on-11. They're doing a lot of 7-on-7 types of stuff. Not only has he been showcasing his athletic ability early on on the offensive side of the football, we know that he's a great special teams player, and Josh McDaniels, and a lot of the coaches are already noticing that. So it is a legitimate shot, which I'm surprised that I'm saying this, legitimate shot that he could be the Raiders wide receiver three. Now, if you love the Raiders, all I want you to do real quick, hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications because we're the number one most watched Raiders show for a reason. And a lot of times, we get a lot of new people that come across the channel this time of the year, and I get asked a lot, why should somebody subscribe to the Raiders report? I'm glad you asked. We get videos every day. We've had a, literally a video on this channel every day for three years. I go live at least once a week. We're interactive. I'm giving some shout outs to some new subs a little bit later on. More subs equals more videos. And right here is maybe the best reason. It's 100% free. Let's go to the next name on my list here for Raiders training camp winners. It's Tyron Johnson. And already... Speed is a major difference maker for him. I'm not saying that a lot of the Raiders receivers don't have speed, but nobody on this roster has 4.3640 speed, which is what Johnson ran at his pro day in 2019. He's already made a few deep plays, which have caught in the eyes of a lot of these coaching staff. And when you really come down to the nitty gritty of your roster, right? If it comes down to a player who offers speed and offers you some special teams ability, that might be enough to keep him around as the Raiders' final receiver. But one good thing is the depth has been sharp. You know Devontae Adams is there. DJ Turner's been looking good from what I understand. Justin Hall's had a few good grabs. Demarcus Robinson, they've been moving all over the football field. Keelan Cole's been impressive. But you know it's Adams. You know Renfro. Those are your top two. Here's the multi-million dollar question. Who is going to be the Raiders' third wide receiver behind Adams, behind Renfro? Did I mention that we're an interactive channel? So here's the thing. I don't want to talk to myself. Let me know down in the comments the Raiders' wide receiver three. The next name on this list is going to be trying to protect the right side of the offensive line for Derek Carr. And it's not Alex Leatherwood. It's Brandon Parker, and he's actually been getting most of the first team reps at the right tackle spot. Obviously, with Parker, he can also play a little bit of swing if Leatherwood does end up beating him out in the long haul. But if the season started today, right now, Brandon Parker would be your starting right tackle. I have one more winner on the offensive side of the football, but here's the thing, y'all. I want to make sure that your D is the biggest winner. Shout out to Manscaped. Use promo code Raiders. 20% off and free shipping. One of the products that I want you to try is the Lawn Mower 4.0. If you want to get the most comfortable boxers that you have ever worn, we got a brand new three pack right here. Go to the link that you see below, manscaped.com. You got to use promo code Raiders. That way, Manscaped knows that we're going balls to the wall with each other here. I want you to make sure your Ken Stabler's clean. I want you to make sure your Nathan Peterman is looking A OK. How do you do that? By getting started with Manscaped. Let's go to somebody who's been looking really good this offseason already. It's Derek Carr, and 
The reason why he's a winner is because I have been told that the wide receiver and tight end groups are legit. Also, I've been told that the offensive line does seem like they're meshing well together. And the thing that's probably been getting the most attention, which it's the offseason, I get it, is around what Devontae Adams said, or I guess called Derek Carr. Called him a Hall of Famer, compared him to Aaron Rodgers. Now, Adams has somewhat cleaned up some of those comments, but I got three quotes from here right here from the best wide receiver in the NFL. What I'm not going to do is take away from that statement because why is Derek not a Hall of Famer? What I meant, I left one keyword out of there because that's not exactly what I meant. But I do think that Derek's career is Hall of Fame worthy, and why not? Does he have the MVPs right now? No. Has he won a Super Bowl? Not yet. That's obviously what we're chasing. But what I meant to say was, even if you go Hall of Famer to Hall of Famer, it's an adjustment. I wasn't saying Hall of Famer Aaron to Hall of Famer Derek, so I'm not retracting my statement at all. But I'm not going to do is say Derek is not going to be a Hall of Famer because at the end of the day, I believe, and this is not putting any expectations or added pressure on him because he puts that type of pressure on himself because of what he expects every time he touches the field. So Devontae Adams is hyping him up. For that reason, Derek Carr, you're a big-time winner because you got 17 on your sideline. Coming up now is going to be some extra winners on the defensive side of the football. The offense during 7-on-7s seven seven gets a lot more attention, but I got three Three names that I want to keep in mind here for all y'all watching. The first one, you know how much I love Deron Harmon. And early on, it sounds like he has been really, really impressive. He didn't get the first team reps the first day of training camp. And as every day has gone on, he has gotten more and more and more. And now he is basically getting all the first team reps. His leadership skills are getting glowing reviews from players like Derek Carr, from players like Max Crosby, Denzel Perriman, and coaches are starting to notice it as well. When the Raiders signed Harmon, I looked at all of y'all up here and I said, this signing reminds me a lot of Casey Hayward. Yes, he's getting up there in age, but when certain players know certain schemes, they can be a player coach out there, and that helps out a lot of your younger guys on the team from top to bottom. Now, when you talk about the overall safety room, he's going to get some more looks over Jonathan Abram. But in terms of the cornerbacks, we're going to now go from the cornerbacks that you see on screen because Trayvon Mullen's been a little bit banged up. And now let's talk about Anthony Averett, who's been working opposite of Rocky Sin as the starting corner. And as long as Trayvon is on the pup, this is more and more reps for Averett, who the Raiders brought in. They gave him a nice little deal in the offseason and i was been told out of all the players on the pup list right now, the Raiders are by far worried the most about Mullen, and there's a chance that Mullen misses the first four games of the season being on the pup list. Like, if Mullen can't go by August 23rd, well, then it's Anthony Averett's job for the first four weeks, and you might not see Mullen on the field. Coaches are loving his competitive nature. Averett loves going up against Devontae Adams and a lot of these talented receivers, but I've heard good things so far about our other cornerback. Let's now look at the linebacking room here. I'm going to go Jayon Brown. And no disrespect to Denzel, no disrespect to Divine Diablo, but he's been the best coverage linebacker so far. And for those of you that watch the show that have been following Jayon's career, that really shouldn't surprise you all too much because that's what he is. He's a coverage linebacker. He's been getting works and work in the nickel. Perriman is still the guy. Perriman is still the top LB on this team, especially in those run-stopping situations, but Perriman is a liability in coverage. It's not ripping on Perriman. That's just the God-honest truth. That's not his strength. I love the beanie. Don't get me wrong, but right now, it's a two-person race between Divine Diablo and Jayon Brown, of who I believe is going to get the second most snaps behind Perriman. I should also mention that I've been getting good word from Darian Butler, the UDFA out of Arizona State. Sounds like he's also had himself a pretty good training camp. Now, I could throw in all of these names here, and this is usually the part of training camp where a lot more people are winners than losers, which is why I structured the show the way that I did. Here are some other honorable mentions. Keelan Cole continues to run some solid reps, and I've been told it's a, between him and Matt Collins for that wide receiver three spot. John Simpson's getting all the starting reps at left guard. Amik Robertson right now, it sounds like he's the third outside corner. Andre James getting most of the starting reps at center. The only other person who's giving him competition is Dylan Parham, and I've been told Parham looks really, really intelligent moving all over that line. And then Divine Diablo. Even though Jayon, I would say, has been the bigger winner, 
Diablo and Jayon and Denzel, those are your top three clear-cut linebackers. Well, who's the biggest winner? I went through a few different names on this list, and maybe you're following some other people out there, and there's a lot of good Raiders content creators. So who do you think thus far has been the biggest training camp winner? Let me know down in the comments. The next thing coming up here on the Raiders report is going to be around Raiders training camp losers. And I love my job, but this is probably the one thing that I don't like to do because I understand that it's very, very early in the process. But I also have to give that type of content here. So we're going to get into four losers, and the first name is it's got to be Alex Leatherwood. He's been working with the second team. When you're drafted in the first round and you struggle the way he did as a rookie, and then you bring in a brand-new coaching staff, Carmen Brasillo, from what it looks like right now, Brandon Parker has been getting more reps at right tackle. Now, that's not saying that Leatherwood hasn't been getting any reps whatsoever, but I was also told that he's struggling with pass protection, which is kind of what I've been saying for a long time, that he's good against the or good in the run game. And Josh Jacobs was hyping up Leatherwood saying, like, hey, he looks good in the run game. Leatherwood is an offensive guard. I'm sorry. He's better in the run game. He struggles in pass protection because he doesn't have the foot quickness. Now, it is only a two-man race to be that starting right tackle, Leatherwood and Parker. And when Parker isn't working with the first-team unit, they are using Leatherwood and a lot of different other offensive line schemes. But he is the second guy, which makes him a loser. Let's now go to running back Zamir White. And he's missed two straight practices. I actually do not know the reason why as I am filming this on Monday. But another reason why he's got to be a loser, Kenyon Drake's been cleared. And from what I understand, he, he looks quick, especially considering the fact that he broke his ankle, what is it, December 5th, 2021. Also, Josh Jacobs looks really impressive. I was told that Jacobs looks faster, he looks quicker, and this is always the best shape of life season. But Jacobs looks motivated because I think for the first time in his NFL career, he understands the idea that there are other players there that could potentially take his job away and take potentially take away his future. So definitely a name to keep in mind is Amir White. The next name coming up here on the Raiders Port, which we'll get to here in just a second. But remember, I told you, we're interactive. And I want to give some shout-outs to some of the new subscribers here on the Raiders Report. So major, major shout-out to the people that were like, all right, I'm actually going to hit this sub button so this guy shuts up and stops talking about it. Jessica, Old640 Gold, Dylan Ryder, Tommy DeVay, Joshua Thompson, y'all the real ones, appreciate you for hitting that sub button. And if you want to see your name on a future show, all you got to do is subscribe and join me for my live show tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. I go live every single Tuesday, or I go live for some breaking news. We do got two more losers to still get into, and uh, this one's not very good, but it's Denzel Good. And even though he is projected to be the starting right guard, he is, well, not out there on the field. Now, he's still recovering from the ACL, and Lester Cotton's looked pretty good. But there was a report that came out. Uh, today or maybe yesterday that good isn't a lock to start and one of the things that I always say is money talks and when you give somebody a, a pay cut when you take them from three point what zero nine million you take them down to 1.04 now sure you can still make an extra 425,000 in incentives but they are deducting his pay for a reason it makes them easier to trade if need be and for that reason alone I think Denzel's a big time loser and then the final name and I know I'm gonna get some hate on this because you all are always like man you're always ripping on Abram but he collided with Roderick Teamer and I'm not saying that that's his fault but if you followed Abram throughout his career, his entire NFL career, he just has no awareness at times for certain situations. And one of the things Gruden used to always yell at him for was like, dude, it's practice. Slow it down a little bit. Collides with Roderick Teamer. Duran Harmon is starting to take away those first team reps. And once that starts, that domino is going to continue. I've been told that he's struggling in coverage, which doesn't surprise me. Abram's going to get his opportunities playing in the box. He's a good run stopper. That's not going to change. I think they're going to use him a little bit more getting after the quarterback as well. But you're crazy if you don't think Deron Harmon is the better safety in this regime. So we gave you some winners. Well, what about some training camp losers? Out of all those names, or maybe I'm missing somebody, please let me know. A Raiders training camp loser so far. So we're going to wrap up today's show. We're going to put a bow on it. And here are the biggest training camp winners. Lester Cotton, Matt Collins, Tyron Johnson, Derek Carr, 
Brandon Parker, Duran Harmon, Anthony Averett, Jayon Brown, and then the biggest training camp losers are Alex Leatherwood, Zamir White, Denzel Good, Jonathan Abram. Appreciate all y'all tuning in. Remember, I'm going to be live tomorrow, and if you made it this far in the video, we got to be doing something right around here. So remember, hit that sub button.